the makers of Vicks VapoRub, Vicks Vatronol, Vicks Cough Drops, and Vicks Inhaler, brings you the Matinee Theater, starring Victor Jory and featuring Janice Gilbert in the request performance of the romantic swashbuckling story, The Pirate of Orleans. We bring you The Pirate of Orleans today because of the continual requests for this fine play. The votes for the Paramount picture, Till We Meet Again, and the love story of Robert Browning and Elizabeth Barrett are still coming in in great numbers. And one of these fine plays will be presented next Sunday. Now, here's a good thing to remember when you catch a cold. The best-known home remedy for relieving miseries of colds is Vicks VapoRub. Ladies and gentlemen, today our story deals with the stirring days of the early 1800s. We take you now to the high seas of adventure to the decks of a tall ship with one of the boldest swashbuckling adventurers that ever sailed, Jean Lafitte, the Pirate of Orleans. Have you met Jean Lafitte yet? No, I can't say that I have. Well, my dear, he's the most handsome thing you ever saw in your life. Oh, is he married? No one knows. But there are all sorts of stories. I've heard that he's married to an Indian princess, a Spanish countess, and a Viennese dancer. What does Mr. Lafitte say to all this? What does Mr. Lafitte say? <laughs> I, I have it on very good authority that Jean Lafitte stopped an entire revolution once. One man against thousands. On whose authority do you have it? Why, on Lafitte's, of course. <laughs> What do you know about Lafitte, Tom? Lafitte? Well, he and his brother have a very fine blacksmith shop, and they just bought a store. A blacksmith? A store? Why, I've heard that he's the leader of the pirates of Baratarian. Oh, nonsense. Whatever Jean Lafitte is, he's positively not a pirate. Yourself. All right. Hold your fire. Hold your fire. Hold fire. Hold fire. Robinson. Penis. Benson. Dominic, lower a boat and come with me. I'll remove the crew and passengers and take the ship back to Barataria. That's too fine a ship to destroy. Come on, men. Let's see what prize we've captured. <laughs> Look at this hole, Dominic. Look at those silks and those spices. We'll get good money for this treasure in New Orleans. It was a very pretty girl. Did you notice, boss? Way over the starboard she was standing. Her hair was like sunshine on a yellow corn. Dominic, what are my orders about women on captured ships? Oh, but couldn't we make an exception to just once? I like that girl with the yellow hair. I'd even marry her. God, me, you're such a beauty. What are my orders, Dominic? Under no circumstances is any woman on any captured ship to be approached for any reason whatsoever. Conversed with or touched unless... Unless by the captain. See, si. Unless by the captain. Well, see that you remember it. You wouldn't look well in irons, Dominic. No, I wouldn't. All right. You start listing the things down here while I go above. We're setting sail at once. too much. Would you mind telling me where you're taking us? If you wish to give me a title, it's privateer, not pirate. Where were you going? New Orleans. And that's where you will be taken. Who are you? What's your name? Constance Winthrop. Constance Winthrop. Is your father General Winthrop? Yes, he is. Then what are you doing on a Spanish ship? I was visiting friends in Spain. If it's any of your business. Oh, you should be more careful of your tongue in the presence of Pirates, Miss Winthrop. I'm not afraid of you. You'd better be. Just as like as not to make you walk the plank tired of the yardum. 
give you the spanking of your life. You do that to a woman? Yes, if I thought she was trying to be on equal footing in a man's world. You have a little to learn about women, pirate. I'm not interested in being taught, Miss Winthrop. Oh, you're impossible. You're conceited, egotistical, arrogant, self-centered. Handsome, magnificent, exciting, fabulous pirate. Now I think you'd better get back to your cabin before I make you walk the plank. Tie you to the yard or... What was that other thing I mentioned, Miss Winthrop? Oh, I... I loathe you. <laughs> oh, pirate. I beg your pardon. I should say privateer. Where is that music coming from? Yep. That's Dominic playing his fiddle. You shouldn't be on deck. You should be in your quarters. No. No, let me look at the moon for a moment. Taste the salt on my lips and... Feel the wind around me. I'm sorry I was so rude this afternoon. I, I lost my temper. Doesn't matter. Women are as changeable as the weather. I don't pay any attention to their moods. I wish you liked me better. Why should you care what I think of you? In the morning you'll be in New Orleans. You'll have left my world. Perhaps I... I'd like to stay in it. You'd like to stay on a pirate ship? I think I would. If it was your ship. Uh, that's because there's a moon tonight and the air is sweet and someone's playing a fiddle. Some other day when the decks were running with blood and the air was heavy with the smell of death, you wouldn't like a pirate ship. What is your name? I have none. You're a hard man to get to know. That's right. And after tomorrow, I'll never see you again? I hope not. You'd put a rope around my neck. Come, the air's getting cold. You'd better turn in. Have you ever kissed a woman, pirate? Oh, <laughs> a thousand. Would you kiss me? Good night and goodbye. Or are you afraid? Afraid? <laughs> no, but you should be. Why? Because to me you'd be just one more woman that I'd kiss. Next week I wouldn't even remember it. But if I kissed you... If I kissed you, Miss Winthrop, you'd never have heart or lips for another man in your life. You're a modest man, aren't you? Modest? Why should I be modest? I'm a handsome, magnificent, exciting, fabulous pirate. You're a conceited, egotistical, arrogant thief. I hope I never do see you again. The temptation to put a rope around that neck might be too great. Good night. <laughs> Good night, my lady. <laughs> Good night. Boss, are you awake? Uh, yes, Dominic. What is it? We're at anchor now. We're ready to take the passengers into New Orleans. You coming up to see them? No. The senorina looks as though she had been crying. Hmm? I'd kiss her myself if it would do any good. Aren't you even going to say goodbye? No. Take them in. All right, boss. All right. <laughs> We made quite a haul this trip. We won't be able to dispose of it for a while, I'm afraid. We're in a little trouble, my brother. Trouble? Why? What's happened? Governor Claiborne has sworn to stop all privateering. Huh? He says he's going to wipe out Barataria if it's the last thing he does in this world. And he says he's going to hang the leader before all of New Orleans. Has he named the leader? No. No? Well, then what are you worried about? In the eyes of Orleans, we're respectable citizens, decent and peace-loving. Maybe, and maybe not. People have always had suspicions. Well, let's not worry about it. I'll have a bath and a shave, and then I'll go pay a social call on Governor Claiborne, perhaps for tea. I haven't had tea with the governor for a long time now, and <laughs> too long for such good friends to be apart. <laughs> I tell you, Jean, I'm going to rid New Orleans of those pirates if it's the last thing I do. I don't blame you. It's gotten so no one's safe around here anymore. I may call on you for help. I'll be glad to help in any way I can. Oh, what? Dear, have you seen... Have you seen my nephew? Hello, Constance, my dear. I'd like you to meet a very good friend of mine, Mr. Jean Lafitte. My niece, Miss Winthrop, Mr. Lafitte. How do you do? She's staying with me until her father's return. This is a pleasure, Mr. Lafitte. A very great pleasure, Miss Winthrop. But I'm afraid I must look in at my shop before it closes. 
Well, then, I'm very happy to meet you, Mr. Lafitte. And I trust we'll meet again soon. Thank you, Miss Winthrop. Good day. Good day, Governor. Come again soon, John. That's a very handsome man, Uncle. That's a very dangerous man. I'm convinced that he's the leader of the privateers. Oh, he doesn't look very dangerous to me. Are you positive? I'm so positive I'm going to put a price on his head and send my men after him tonight. Come in, Miss Winthrop. Sit down. You'll find that corner chair the most comfortable. Thank you. Would you care for a sherry? Thank you, no. Your manners have improved since last we met, sir. I changed with the environment. Why did you come here? My uncle knows who you are. You told him? No, of course not. I don't know how he found out. If it's true that he knows, why didn't he keep me there this afternoon? Oh, what match would he have been for you? He was alone in the house. But tonight he will come with troops. He doesn't think you suspect that he knows, so naturally he wouldn't expect you to try to escape. Well, then I must be on my way. There are some men to be worn. Oh, hurry, then, and take care of yourself. I've... I suppose this time I never will see you again. Constance, once I told you I'd kissed a thousand women. It was a lie. I know. I've only kissed two or three hundred. <laughs> How many men have you kissed? Very few. You offered me a kiss. Why? <laughs> Such a foolish reason, I'm afraid. I, I just want to kiss you. Will you kiss me now? Well, I should say not. Not after the way you acted. I was never so humiliated, so... John. so. Oh. I told you not to kiss me. You might as well have said, stop breathing. <laughs> Goodbye, Constance. Goodbye. And thank you. When will I see you again? When will you see me again? And you'll see me when the moon rides in a certain way that you remember seeing before in a midnight sky. You'll see me when you see a ship riding an anchor with a battered look about her, and you'll see me when you hear someone laugh in a certain way or someone shout or perhaps cry, and you'll see me every time someone else kisses you. I will not. Well, I'm never to see you again. I can forget you in a minute. Oh, you'll see. I can forget you all right. Then you're not the girl for me, my beauty. Goodbye. John! Goodbye! I hate that man. I hate him. But, oh, God of me, how I love him. In just a moment, the second act of The Pirate of Orleans, starring Victor Jory. In just a few days now, spring will be here, so the calendar says. But that doesn't do you much good today if you have one of those pesky March colds. What you want most is relief from the miserable distress of that cold. So take the advice of millions of folks from their own personal experience and rub Vicks Vapor Rub on your throat, chest, and back. Then enjoy the comfort that comes as VapoRub's relief-giving action goes right to work to help relieve congestion and irritation in the upper breathing passages, to ease the coughing spasms, sore throat, and that muscular soreness or tightness. You see, VapoRub is so effective because it penetrates, penetrates into the cold, congested upper bronchial tubes with its special soothing vapors, and at the same time it stimulates stimulates chest and back surfaces like a comforting, warming poultice. And this penetrating, stimulating action of vapor rub keeps on working for hours to bring such wonderful relief. Mind you, only vapor rub gives you this special penetrating, stimulating action, the best-known home remedy for relieving miseries of cold. Vicks Vapor Rub. Now, Act Two of The Pirate of Orleans, starring Victor Jory and featuring Janice Gilbert. As our curtain rises, we find Jean Lafitte at his hideout on Barataria. The War of 1812 is entering its fourth year, and as our scene opens, 
Mr. Lafitte is considering an offer. Mr. Lafitte, His Majesty's government is prepared to offer you the sum of $30,000 in return for your help in capturing the city of New Orleans. And full pardon for you and your maiden. Does the offer interest you? The offer interests me very much. I shall have to have time to think it over. Very well, Mr. Lafitte. As you know, we are anchored just outside your harbor. Yes. We shall await your answer. John! Oh, Jean, I'm so glad I found you. I have to talk to you. How did you ever get to Baratelli? I persuaded one of your men to bring me to you. Jean, there's terrible trouble in New Orleans. The British are close by, and there aren't enough men to defend the city. General Andrew Jackson has just arrived, and he's ill with a fever and can't get men. What do you want me to do about it? Why, why, help General Jackson defend it, of course. Are you forgetting there's a price on my head in New Orleans? Oh, I'm sure you could get a pardon. I want New Orleans safe. And I want you safe in New Orleans. But I don't want safety. I've never wanted it. I don't want it now. I want a deck under my feet and a gun in my hand and a worthy prize coming in on the horizon. And I thought I loved you. Why, you haven't a decent, honorable motive in you. I thought you were a fearless man that would fight for a principle. But I see now you're only a thief after all. You'll only fight for a prize. Well, goodbye, Mr. Lafitte. Forgive me for taking up your time. General Jackson, you've heard my offer. Now then, will you grant a pardon for me and my men so that we may fight for the United States? The United States is most grateful, Mr. Lafitte. We accept your help with deep thanks, and your pardon shall be granted. Almighty God, accept our humble thanks for the victory we have just won. Well, Mr. Lafitte, America and New Orleans will always be grateful to you. If it hadn't been for your help and the help of your men, we would never have won such a great victory. Thank you, General Jackson. We were fighting a great cause. Now, my boy, go on out there and dance and have a good time. You're the hero of the hour, and all the ladies are waiting to dance with you. Tell you about myself? Well, now, let's see. A year or two ago, south of the Canary Islands, oh, very south of the Canaries, I defeated an entire native army single-handed. All by yourself? Oh, Mr. Lafitte. Just imagine. It was nothing. I picked them up two by two and cracked their heads together. Oh, do tell me about yourself, Mr. Lafitte. Well, now, let's see. One time, six or seven months ago, somewhere north of Haiti, very north of Haiti, as a matter of fact, I decided to hunt for treasure on the ocean bed. So I put one knife in my teeth and one in each hand, and I dove in. I came face to face immediately with six sharks. Oh, and what happened? Uh, they ate me. Oh. So I wiped out the entire nation of cannibals single-handed. And then I was a little tired. When the camel got tired of carrying me, I carried the camel. Sultan had a harem of 60 wives. I had a thousand and sixty. And so I slept for the next 120 years. <laughs> well, I was wondering if I was ever to have the pleasure of dancing with the lion of the evening. I've been hearing stories about you. I understand you defeated an entire native army single-handed. I could never lie to you, Constance. As a matter of fact, it was only a brigade. I also understand that you carried a camel. It was a very small camel. And that you slept 120 years. But only fitfully, my dear. Only <laughs> fitfully. <laughs> oh, let's let's not dance. Let's go outside by the water for a few minutes. It's hot in here. All right. Mmm. Smell that sea. 
Just smell it. Drink it deep inside you, savor it and taste it, and don't let it get away from you. What do you think of when you close your eyes and smell the sea? I... I think of a house somewhere beside it. And I see you in that house, looking as though you were a part of it. I see little boys with your eyes and, and your trick of shaking your head when you're angry, running in and out of the house, banging doors and filling it with laughter. What do you see? I see... I see sails filled with wind. And sometimes I see that it's smooth and swelling and sometimes rough and challenging and ready for a brawl. I see China and the Indies and cargoes of silks and spices. I see islands, tropic trees against a yellow moon, and bananas and dates and coconuts within the reach of your hand. I see cliffs where the mountains bend down to see who's coming in the harbor, and I see harbor lights blinking a welcome. You smell the ocean and you see the ends of the earth. And I smell it and see home. And that's the difference between us. So this is where I say goodbye, Constance, my dear. Oh, no. No, stay. Try it here. You might like it. Like it? I couldn't live the life of an honest man. I've had no practice. Do you want to domesticate me like a cow or a dog? Do you want to put milk into my veins instead of blood and chain me to a fireplace? I'd be so irritable inside a week that you'd hate me. Do you love me? Oh, Constance, what's the good of that? I'd like to know. You've never said. Yes. Yes, I love you. I love you, and I suspect that for the rest of my life I'm going to have a great emptiness in my heart. But still, you'll leave me? Yes. Still, I'll leave you. When are you going? Tonight. Tonight? Yes, the pride is riding at anchor now outside the harbor. Well, if you'd rather have a ship than a wife, I'm certainly not going to argue with you. That's the secret. Snap your fingers at me. Tell me to go and be hanged. There are plenty of other men in the world, you know, just as attractive as pirates. And much more honest. But not as attractive as I am. I'm a very special person, even for a pirate. You certainly are. You haven't got a heart. Where your heart should be, you've got a cutlass. Careful. Don't let yourself trip over that cutlass. You might get your feelings hurt. Oh, I... I loathe you. Good. Now we're on the same footing as when we met. And with that, I bid you an affectionate good night and goodbye. I... I won't kiss you this time. I don't want to make it any harder for you to forget me. Oh, don't worry. It won't be hard. Good night, my beauty. And goodbye. Jean! Jean! Oh, aggravation. <laughs> Well, Dominic, we're off on adventure again, eh? Yeah, boss. Where are we bound? I don't know. Somewhere south. We're off on a long trip this time, Dominic. Are we uh, running away from somebody? Yes, Dominic. You might say we are. We're running away from domesticity, from cottages and ruffled lace curtains. We're going back into a man's world. Myself, I like a man's world. With women in it. Mm. That's your great weakness, Dominic. Well, it's late. I think I shall turn in for a while. Tell the man at the wheel, our course is steady as she goes, south, southeast. Aye, aye, sir. Good night, boss. Well, I'll be hanged. Hello, pirate. Uh, Dominic. Dominic, stop playing that fiddle. It isn't going to help one bit. What are you doing in my quarters, on my ship? I'm measuring your portholes for curtains. You! I can't stand windows without curtains. You'll have to make me that concession. I'll make you no concession. You're going right back to New Orleans. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm going to China and the Indies for silks and spices. I'm going to see tropic trees against a yellow moon and cliffs where the mountains bend down to see who's coming in the harbor. I'm going with you. That isn't the life you want. You want cottages and fires and things. You want a home. You're my home. Oh, don't send me back, Jean. I love you. I belong with you. I don't want you here. Oh, yes, you do. Who are you going to tell about the stars and the winds and the weather? And who are you going to brag to about your conquests? And who are you going to kiss, if not me? No one. 
I am sufficient unto myself. I see. You are the king, hmm? That's right. <laughs> well, move over, king. You're going to have to share your throne. There's a pirate queen now, too. But I don't... Put your arms around me. But I tell you... Try to look as though you like it. Like it? You're a baggage and a shrew and a bad-tempered <laughs> scrap of womanhood if ever there was one. Lower your chin a little. And I suspect you're a punishment that's been visited on me for some sin in my youth. And... Kiss me, Jean. Oh, but that... You do love me? Oh, yes. Well, you can be very sure of that. I do love you. Everything's all right, boss. Everything's wonderful, Dominic. Everything is wonderful. Oh, then this is a good time to tell you I got a wife with yellow hair down in the hole, no? No. This is not a good time. Then I tell you some other time. Good night, boss. Hey, good night. Oh, Sean. Oh, darling, you're so wonderful. Well, yes, I am. Yes, I must admit it. I have a good ship and a good crew and a good wife. And shall I tell you something? I did it all myself, single-handed. <laughs> In just a moment, an important message from Victor Jory. You know, my friends, the war has caused many shortages. In many cases, it has made the use of substitutes necessary. But this is not true of that famous family standby, Vicks VapoRub. There are no wartime substitutes in the VapoRub you buy. Although some of the countries that supplied us with aromatics and medications were taken by the enemy, we found new sources. As a result... There are no wartime substitutes in VapoRub. It is the same fine, effective VapoRub. The same high quality you enjoyed before the war. The best known home remedy for relieving miseries of colds. Time tested, home proved, Vicks VapoRub. This is Victor Jory. I want to take this opportunity to thank you very much for the many fine things you have said in recent letters about the matinee theater productions. The votes are still coming in in great numbers for both the love story of Robert Browning and Elizabeth Barrett and Paramount's fine motion picture, Till We Meet Again. Next week, Gertrude Warner will appear with me in the one that you select. Remember, the choice is between Paramount's ripping story, Till We Meet Again, and the love story of Robert Browning and Elizabeth Barrett. Please write me care of Columbia Broadcasting, New York 22, New York. Our script today was written by Gene Holloway and was directed by Richard Sandville. Music for this series is under the direction of Mark Warno. Be sure to be with us next week when Vicks, the makers of Vicks Patronol, Vicks Cough Drops, and Vicks Inhaler, brings you another great matinee theater production starring Victor Jory. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Mm-hmm.